Welcome to Millionaire Insiders. Today I have Josh Shipp, and what he tells us is exactly what he uses in Infusionsoft for his autoresponder for his multi-million dollar business. He goes through step-by-step step exactly what each email says, and I know you're gonna get a lot out of this. I'm here with Josh Shipp. I hope you enjoyed his interview on the show. And so now we're gonna sort of dive deep into a lot more what we talked about from before about email lists. He's, in case you didn't watch his interview, you should definitely go and watch that for sure because he's been on so much press, I can't even mention it all. He's an author, motivational speaker, TV host, all sorts of things. Thanks for coming on the show today, Josh. Yeah, absolutely, my pleasure. Perfect, okay, so let's get into it because in the, during the interview we started talking about email lists and how it's super important for any business owner at all, I personally think, but also for speakers, and you do it really, really well. You have over 220,000 people on your list right now, which is really important. So give us an overview of how this morphed and what sort of stuff you're doing right now. Great, yeah, so the, I mean, the first thing is, you know, why build the email list? Let's just start with that thesis. So why build the email list is that you have to realize 99% of people are not just going to stumble upon your website, somehow click an ad or something, and, and immediately trust you enough to hand over their money. Mm -hmm. You know, that will happen from time to time, but don't be foolish enough to think that that is the... Um, that that's normally what's going to happen. It's just the exception, not necessarily the rule. Mm -hmm. And so the whole goal of an email list is to get people on there, add value to them in advance, uh, prove your trustworthiness and credibility to them in advance, and then eventually over time try to get them to buy something. So that's a goal. Let's kind of talk through how I structure this and think through it. Um, the first thing is that you want to define who your buyer is and who your audience is. Right, so who is your audience and who is your buyer? So what do I mean by this? Um, I'll use, uh, throughout this example, I'll use my online mentoring program, A Year of Awesomeness, as sort of our working case study. So A Year of Awesomeness is an online mentoring program for teenagers. And so that is an example of my audience. So my audience is, you know, 14 to 19-year-old teenage guys and girls. So they're the audience. There's, they are who is going to consume the content. And so when I'm creating the actual videos for that, the stuff for that product, I need to have that person in mind. Now, who is my buyer? Uh, well, because this program is pretty cheap, it's only like 19 bucks a month, some teenagers will be the buyer. Some teenagers will buy it for themselves. However, the majority of the buyer is going to be parents, particularly mothers. Mm. So now that I know who my buyer is, which is typically a mother you know, in their 40s, uh, this is really, really important because how I communicate to her is way different than how I'm going to communicate to the teenager. You know, The teenager is this stuff is cool and fun, is going to make you be awesome and all of that sort of stuff, whereas with the mother, that's not what she cares about. Um, what she cares about is I have this kid that I love and he won't listen to me. Um, and I have to say, well, first of all, that's not your fault. That's normal. Did you listen to your mom when you were a teenager? Probably not. So let me talk to your kids about the things that you care about, but let me do it for you. And so I'm going to talk about how I'm going to talk to them about responsibility and taking personal uh, accountability of their life and choosing good friends. And all of those things I'm going to do, by the way, but I wouldn't pitch it to the kid like that. I'm not going to say, oh, hello, I'm going to talk to you about personal responsibility and character and integrity. They'd be like, screw this. This is terrible. <laughs> Um, so the whole point is here is that sometimes you're in a situation where your audience and your buyer is the mm -hmm. exact same person and good for you. Sometimes you're in a situation where your audience and your buyer are two different people. So just be aware of that subtlety because, and I made this mistake early on, if you talk to your buyer like you talk to your audience or vice versa, it will bite you. Hmm. So now that you know who your buyer is, so with this online mentoring program, um, I need to try to find as many you know, mothers of teenagers as possible. So now once you know who that person is, you know, 42-year-old female has a kid, now you need to start to identify where can I find a sea of them? Where can I find a ton of them? And that's where you want to spend your efforts. That those are the events you want to go speak at for free. Those are the blogs you want to be doing um, guest posts on. 
there is the analytics for any Facebook ads or Google ads you're running. You know, you can say 35 to 55 year old females in Facebook ads as an example. Mm. Um, so you need to begin to think about, okay, so where can I find a never ending sea of my buyer? Um, you know, they're probably going to be fans of blank and subscribe to blank magazine and these sorts of things. Um, and once you identify that, then you need to think about what is their number one current frustration? Mm. And how can I solve it in exchange for them getting on my email list? Um, solve is probably too ambitious of a word. You know, I can't solve it as egotistical, but how can I give them some comfort or some hope or some advice that might help them a bit? Uh, so, again, using my uh, buyer as an example, 42-year-old female, uh, mother of a teenage kid, their number one frustration is that their kid won't listen to them. You know, the kid listened to them when they were 10, and now they're 15, and they won't listen to them. Um, and so to get them on my email list, which is the whole goal, not to get them to buy right now, but just to get them on the list, um, you know, that's how I'm, I'm going to talk to them, uh, is say, hey, let me guess, you got a kid, and the kid was great, and then they turned 15, and now they're an alien. <laughs> and they won't listen to you. And so you begin to voice their frustrations, which all this assumes that you actually know your buyer. Um, so you either got to talk to a bunch of them, survey a bunch of them, something. You got to know, like, what are those things that they're scared to say out loud? You know, that mother is sitting there thinking that she's a terrible mom, and she's probably not talking to anyone about it. And the truth is, she's not a terrible mom. She's just the mother of a teenager, and this is normal. This is not a sales pitch, by the way. Mm. Like, it's, 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 honest. Like, I'm not just trying to say, oh, you're not a terrible mother because I want to sell you something. That's BS. Like, it's actually true. You know, every mother of a teenager thinks that they're a bad mom and they're mm -hmm. the only one that, the, that their teenager isn't listening to. No, this, like, happens everywhere. So, <laughs> uh, like, you're, you're, you're not a bad parent. You're just the parent of a teenager. So, you got to make sure that you're voicing their frustration and then offer them some sort of tool piece of advice, helpful something in exchange for hopping on your email list. Mm. Um, and then through that, you can, as we said, you know, give them results in advance, give them some help, some advice, and then eventually uh, try to sell them something. And so how I would do that is I would give them three videos over the course of 10 days. That would be like, you know, simple techniques you can use to get your kid to listen to you. For example, don't lecture, but ask them questions. When you lecture a kid, they shut down. When you ask them questions, it trains their critical thinking, and that's what you want. You don't want a kid that's dependent upon you because they're about to move out and go to college. You want a kid that can think for themselves. Um, so I'd give them something very helpful. I'd also give them something that subtly brags about my credibility. Um, so, for example, I would probably send them a video of me on the Anderson Cooper show or the Jeff Probe show, something like that. Now, back in the day, I didn't have that kind of press. So, but you do have something third party about you that's impressive. So maybe you were featured on another blog or interviewed in, in your local paper or something where it's not just me uh, hosted on my site, you know, trying to prove to you that I'm credible, but, but some sort of other party or entity or these sorts of things saying, you know, yeah, she knows what she's talking about. Um, and then eventually I'm going to try to get them to buy a year of awesomeness for their kid. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I'll talk about the importance of mentorship and having a pitch hitter and you don't always need to be the one talking to your kid. Um, you know, let me do that for you. Now, all of this is rooted in, uh, number one, a, a genuine desire to help. Um, and secondly, having a good product at the end of the day to sell them. Um, if, you know, if you have a crappy product, superior marketing isn't going to help you. But if you have a great product and you can match it with superior marketing, uh, you, you're really going to win. You're really going to, uh, you know, much quicker accelerate to sort of the, that, you know, that empire of impact. Mm. Um, and when you know at the end of the day you've got a good product, you'll be more gutsy in your marketing. Um, you won't be bashful to look someone in the eye and say, look, you need to buy this. Like, it's going to help you. And, and if it doesn't, we'll give you your money back. Like, whatever. We don't care. No pressure. Uh, I think that's a subtle thing about making sure you really create a great product is that then you don't sell from your heels. You don't hmm. sell in a cowardly position. But you know, look, other people have got this, used it, 
and it genuinely helps them. Um, and so you should give it a try. I love that. Now I have a couple questions going back. Like why 10 days and three videos and how do you actually sell? So if you could sort of take me through the thought process of that, because I've heard a lot of different autoresponder sequence ideas and I'm just wondering yeah. how you sort of came across to that. Yeah, so I don't think, I think this is more of an art than a science. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think some of the stuff you need to include in your copy and on your pages is more of a science, but I think how many videos or how many emails over what period of time, I think that's more of an art and kind of depends on your, on your particular audience. Um, so for me, those three pieces of email, I'm trying to think about what are the three things that if someone watched or consumed, it would be irrefutable that I have added value and that I am a, a source to be trusted. So, you know, back in the day, I didn't have impressive pieces of stuff, but I did have something. Um, and so you got to think about look in your inventory and what are the three things that if I can place in front of people and they would mm -hmm. actually watch or read, they would without question trust me. What we ignorantly think is that someone goes on our website and looks at all of our pages and reads all of our posts and watches all of our videos. And that's complete what? total garbage. No, but people don't do that. What? Exactly. But through the email list, you have the opportunity to control what pieces of content they consume in what order. So that's really, really important. So think of this as a meal. You know, what is the appetizer? What is the entree? What is the dessert? You know, it's really important that it's in a particular order. It's really important what comes first, what comes second, what comes third. And so for you, that may, may be five pieces. And this may be a five-course meal for some of you. This may be a 10-course meal for some of you. Um, for me, it's a three-course meal, uh, particularly because the price point I'm asking is 19 bucks. So, um, you know, I have other programs that are in the $1,000 range, and so for that, I may need to have a more extensive course because I really need to prove in advance because I'm asking you to shell out some pretty serious money. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's kind of dependent upon your particular buyer, um, not audience, but buyer, and you know, ultimately what you're trying to sell them. Mm. So if you can just, I know we need to wrap up in just a second, but tell me a little bit about what that sales email looks like and what page, like the sales page looks like that works well for you. Cause I know it's different and it is an art definitely, but I'm just wondering your feedback on that. So mine, so once I kind of add value to them, um, I'm probably going to ask them to buy three different times in th using three different angles. Okay. Um, so the first email will be sort of more subtle. You know, it'll, let's say with the year of awesomeness, it'll talk about the importance of mentorship, you know, third party data talking about the results that mentors can provide for a kid. And then like a real subtle link, you know, maybe even in the PS, I mean, real, real not pushy at all. Oh, by the way, you know, I have this online mentoring program for teens. If you think that's something your teen could benefit from. It, it, check it out here. So real, real subtle. Um, and then if someone doesn't, if someone buys, they're going to be removed from the sequence. Mm -hmm. um, very important. If someone doesn't buy, the next email is going to be, be more kind of just, that's the whole point of the email is like, you know, um, you know, want me to, the subject line might be, want me to mentor your kid. And it's going to be just straight up, you know, I have this burden for mentoring kids. I have a goal to mentor kids. Uh, this is really important to me. I needed it. It's made a great difference in my life and, and every kid that I've mentored. Uh, so you need to buy this for your kid, and if you don't love it, we'll give you your money back. Uh, in that email, I'd have a, I'd have a thumbnail of, the, of a video uh, because when I put an image in an email, it, it proves to have a much higher click-through rate. Ooh, nice. And it's, it's much more interesting than just... Uh, you know, just a, a bunch of text, even if you try to get fancy and bold and italicize stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, and, it, and if you hop on my email list, you'll obviously get taken through the sequence so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, and then that, that third and final email, you know, this is going to be kind of the hard sell. And so, you know, if you have something that's available only for a limited period of time, which my online mentoring program for teens is not, it's open year-round, um, but if you have something that's kind of only available for a certain period of time, you need to use that to your advantage. You know, say, hey, you know, this week, you know, the buy my book and get blank bonus is done. So, um, you know, if you want to do this, now's your time. Mm. Um, 
So you have to find some sort of reason to give uh, truthful scarcity, you know, truthful like kind of, I'm from Oklahoma, so there's a phrase called poop or get off the pot. You know, it's like, you know, either do it or leave. Uh, you know, sort of if, if you've been thinking about it, uh, uh, you know, do such. Nice. I love this. Thank you very much for taking us through. And then the sales page is probably something that, you know, converted from testing and all that fun stuff. So, you know, that that yeah, works it's, pretty well. You know, it's, it's uh, primarily going to be a video because the way I've been communicating with these folks in the past is a video. You know, it's going to have pretty m minor text. I mean, the big thing is the design of it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of stuff in the online marketing world. Uh, this Jamie, the site of your design is really, really great, by the way. Thank you. Um, but some of the stuff, it's like really sleazy looking and really salesy looking and everything's red and yellow and it, it circles just, and highlights and yeah. I know. And it just, even if the stuff is 100% legitimate, it just puts you on your heels and goes, you know, this is scammy. Yeah. Um, and so as, as important as what you say is, it's also how you say it and how you say it in online sales is a design. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I just try to make the stuff look classy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yes, use all those those non-negotiable internet marketing um, rules such as risk reversal with a money back guarantee and, you know, scarcity when possible. Like leverage all of that, but just put it in a suit, put it in a dress, make it look nice. Uh, Incredible. You know, it, yeah. Instead of you know, it can mm. come off scammy, even if you're not, yeah. you know, even if you're not, it doesn't matter whether or not you are, it matters uh, whether or not someone perceives you to be. Mm, if I act like a used car salesman, everyone's going to think I'm a used car salesman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And again, that's why in your copy, it's important just to have like a human voice instead of a salesy voice. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just talk like yourself, even when you're selling people, yeah. you know, even, even when you're selling people, just talk like yourself. You don't have to, you know, start up. Oh, hello. Good evening. You need to buy this excellent product with the following seven bullet points, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not saying there's something wrong with bullet points. I'm saying talk <laughs> like yourself. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. What we're going to do is put all this into an action guide so someone can follow step by step through. So you should be able to find that below. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll probably link up to all your stuff too. So that way everyone can take a look. And if they have a teenager in their life, they can go ahead and get that too. I really yeah. appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Where can we find out more online? Yeah, go to go to joshship.com, and I would encourage you, um, whether or not you intend to buy something, I don't care, but sign up for my email list, mm -hmm. and you can sort of see what I do and how I do it. And anytime you get an email from me, you know, just sit there and kind of analyze it for a few minutes and go, you know, what is he trying to do here? What's sort of the, the point behind this? And how can I do something similar in, in my business with my audience? Definitely. And I highly recommend going to your site just to check out your videos because they are awesome. And just if anyone's going through trying to create a good uh, video on their website, just having yours as an idea. I'm creating videos for my book coming up and I'm like, I need to send my video guy to your website because I think they're awesome. So definitely That's check cool. that out too. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Josh. I really yep. appreciate my it. My pleasure. Take care. Thank you.